Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Technical Forum at the Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries Group Exhibit 2018. I invite all of you who are standing around uh, listening to grab a seat, enjoy a coffee, water, or juice while you uh, listen to the next presentation. So next up, we have fuel cell research and development, how it actually should be. And here to speak with you today on this topic is Mr. Thomas Dane, who is the application manager of AVL List. Hope you all enjoy. Thank you. So welcome to this today's stage uh, about the revolution in fuel cell R&D. And uh, before I dig into my presentation, I want to just let you know about a little bit of myself. I'm doing fuel cells since 23 years now. Actually, I was 15 when I decided I want to be part of the people who are changing the world to a better place, uh, like so many people believe in that time. Uh, and uh, at that time, I was aiming for doing solar energy, uh, hydro energy, or wind energy. And during my university time, I got in touch with uh, hydrogen storage systems and then fuel cells. And I was 21 when I first got in contact to fuel cells. And I said, OK, that's the thing I want to do. And since then, that's 23 years in the past now, I'm doing fuel cells. And I started at the research center Jülich, and then I moved to General Motors Fuel Cell Activities and uh, was there for 13 years and developed five generations of fuel cell electric vehicles. So I have quite a little bit of experience. And uh, while I was there, I got in charge at the end for the last five and a half years to be uh, um, the, the lead for the development, validation, and test execution team. And I had to sign free everything that was tested around fuel cells. So, and that was a really great time. And um, in 2013, I decided to move to AVL. And I just, before I start my presentation, I wanted to let you know why I did that. Um, I saw that as a great opportunity if one like me joins a company like AVL that is distributed all over the world, connected to everywhere in the automotive industry, I saw a really big opportunity to push the whole technology and get towards my vision and to change the world to get away from just burning oil. And that was my drive to go to AVL. And uh, since I'm there, um, I also triggered the cooperation with Greenlight Innovation. You probably know them. They're quite famous in the fuel cell business. And uh, Greenlight Innovation and AVL together um, we are now having the capability to really change something. So the AVL is the world, uh, the l world largest private automotive uh, engineering company and also for simulation and testing equipment. And with Greenlight Innovation, who is the global leader in fuel cell testing, um, we have more than 9,600 people now. Um, and we have a turn turnover of more than 1.5 billion euros. And Every single year, 10% of that turnover is reinvested into innovative research and development activities. And uh, we focus, due to our past of AVL, strictly on developing an envi environmental uh, in, uh, solutions that are suitable for zero production development. So it's not research and playing around, it's really you want to do research for zero production vehicles. So we jo now join 70 years of tool chain development experience, what is really needed in the tool chain and the infrastructure to do zero production development. That is the part of AVL. Then uh, I brought in the 23 years of fuel cell R&D experience. Um, AVL themselves has also a department doing fuel cell research, and they are doing that since 15 years now. And uh, there's also now, due to my experience, the knowledge of developing five generations of fuel cell electric vehicles in the company. And uh, that also leads then that all the product development is really based on very profound knowledge from fuel cell experts. I'm not the only one, but I'm the most experienced one. Um, as I don't know how many of you really is, are deep in fuel cell technology, so there's a lot of stuff around fuel cells, 
but if you start to compare that with different technologies like engines or battery, you see that there's quite big, a big overlap with engines, for example. Um, and if you, if you see that, you, you, you're just recognizing that also the solutions and the methodologies and whatever is behind that to do engine development is also f suitable for fuel cells to some extent. The same is true for the battery world. Again, there's a lot of stuff you can reuse after you did or from the thing you, you spent to do battery development. And together that means that fuel cells have a lot in common with engines or battery development, but they also have some fuel cell specific topics. And uh, because there is that big overlap, you can reuse existing solutions. And that makes it also very powerful now if you use the infrastructure that is available from AVL for internal combustion engines also for fuel cells. Because all the methodology, all the processes, all the thinking behind matches to fuel cells as well. And that got, gets even more obvious if you ever did the execution of a development process of a fuel cell vehicle. I did that development for five vehicles and I can say you we started to use an engine development process and at the end we ended up in keeping that development process of an engine fired internal combustion engine vehicle but we had just some minor changes in the process but the process itself just stood the same. And the main difference between the ICE world and the fuel cell world was that we had to introduce a lot of more virtual environment testing. And the background there is, there is a quite weak uh, supplier base uh, for fuel cells. Quite often the suppliers don't have any experience with the automotive industry. All the components um, are not tested to automotive standards and so on. And you get components on the OEM side that are too late or not functioning or whatever. And you have just to wait, but no OEM can afford to wait. And so you have to introduce more virtual testing into your test environment to get around that missing components. And especially if you think, OK, now no, let's imagine we are an OEM who did hundreds of cycles with uh, ICE developments of, of cars. And AVL is able to really deliver everything around an ICE development. And now you have to get the fuel cell topic into that, new, into that uh, existing structure. It doesn't make any sense to build a new structure beside the ICE world because they will fight each other and that doesn't work at all. And so you have to think about, okay, how can I transi uh, transition my fuel cell technology into a serial production product? And uh, how can I ensure that the knowledge is built up as fast as possible in, within my company? And how to merge that topic fuel cell into the existing system? And that is quite a big of a deal. It doesn't sound like that at the beginning, but it is. And uh, what's about all the fuel cell specific stuff you need? that is not overlapping with batteries or ICs. And what's about all the data? Especially if you start to develop a new technology, you have no clue what, to, what data you actually need, with which resolution and so on. So we have to capture much more data than for ICEs you do, you're doing since I don't know how many years. And so now what the first step that was already introduced uh, two years or so again, again on, on the ferry already, that was that we now merged up with Greenlight Innovation. So the knowledge of how to test fuel cells, and they are quite famous, as I mentioned before, in the fuel cell area. Uh, and, but they are coming from mainly research. The complete fuel cell technology, when I joined 1980, I don't know, nine or so, uh, originally, um, is yes, coming from a lot of research activities and really getting into serial production or pre-serial production in the last five to six years or so. And all the companies providing equipment for fuel cells uh, went through this, that path and started from research. 
So their mindset is research, their requirement set is research, and they're starting now to get towards automotive, but AVL comes from the other direction. So they are automotive, and they have all the tool chain that is required to do zero production development, and they're opening now the tool chain to be also available for fuel cells. And that is really a big game changer that changes everything. Not only doing something around fuel cells, this equipment is now able to guarantee or to develop at a level that is zero production intent. And that is the big difference. So mentioning that we have a joint venture with, uh, not a joint venture, a partnership with Greenlight Innovation. Um, Greenlight Innovation stays at cell and stack as they do and did in the past. And Greenlight is taking up uh, from the fuel cell system up to the complete vehicle. And especially the system test bench can be compared fairly well with the engine test bench in terms of the infrastructure that is needed and especially in the tool chain that is needed. There's a lot of work that is in common with the engine and therefore the tool chain fits extremely well. And that is how a, a, a system tench be test bench looks like. Someone who did engine development in the past might say, okay, it looks like an engine test bed. And the reason is, it's the same tool chain, so and the same hardware more or less, and feel it to some extent. And you see that on this screen here is the Puma, that's the automation system from AVL that is installed more than 5,000 uh, engine test beds worldwide. And that is now also able to host uh, fuel cell systems and control fuel cell systems. And um, has all the, the features and functions that are required to do zero production development. And it can be combined then with AVL Cameo. Cameo is a design of experiment tool that actually is uh, supporting one who is calibrating your, the system um, with, with an infrastructure that enables to um, automatically find the best calibration set for certain behavior I'm looking for. As an ex ex uh, example, I would want to calibrate my system to be extremely powerful, but have some uh, restrictions concerning durability and some restrictions concerning fuel efficiency. And if I define how that should look like at the end, I can then use that tool to calibrate the control unit of the fuel cell system to do that job and find the, the best spot in calibration. And um, just to let you know, or to give you an, uh, a relation how what we are talking about, a hybrid car, I was part of the team who developed also in, in the Volt, so the GM Volt car, and that car had about 100,000 control labels. So one has to calibrate to get that thing running in any case. And a fuel cell system is in the area of 60 to 70,000 calibration labels you have to take care about. And that, if you want to do things like that, you need more than just playing around, turning one screw and the other and hoping that it works somehow. You really have tools that guides you through and identifies how that turning a screw affects all the rest of the system. And this, this kind of tool is designed to do that. And then you really know, OK, I can tweak this set of twe uh, tweaks and get the best out of my system. And we can also use uh, AVL Concerto. Concerto is a standard uh, an analysis software, extremely powerful, extremely flexible. And you can do anything what you want to do for engine, but also now for fuel cells uh, in terms of data analysis. And what I mentioned before, the virtual environment, we also have uh, with Cruise M, that's something like MATLAB Simulink an environment to simulate missing parts of the system. And that can then be connected with Model Connect or Testbed Connect that's not shown here. Um, and can even uh, yeah, build a, real or a virtual vehicle around a real fuel cell system driving through a real uh, uh, virtual environment. And so you're always able to have a consistent consistency of data through different integration areas uh, levels. Um, and repeatability of data and all the stuff that is important to do zero production development. And uh, 
the one of the big things is that really changed a lot is that you really are able to integrate your system into that virtual environment and virtual vehicle and are testing even at a lower level always against the final against the final uh, solution in the in the car and this chamber for example is able to mimic the environment uh, from minus 40 to 85 that is just one example that you see here and uh, that actually leads me to the point that fuel cell research and development um, yeah, is now at a new level and it's really time to get serious now. So if there's any question, please ask. Thank you so much for that presentation. Um, as he mentioned, if there's any questions from the audience, I'd be happy to bring the microphone down so that we can all hear you together. Um, there's no need to be shy. There's plenty of people here, and I'm sure if you're thinking of a question, somebody else is wondering it too. But if there are no takers at this moment, I'm sure uh, Mr. Dane would be more than happy to answer questions at a later point. Um, you can find him at booth D56, uh, where you can chat a little bit more to representatives from AVL List. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. At this point, I'd like to invite all of you to remain where you are, um, if, I mean, if you'd like to, or if you're standing, feel free to fill in some of the gaps at the front. We have a really exciting afternoon for you here. Uh, we're starting our first round of elevator pitches, so everyone will be getting a shorter time slot. We'll get a lot of information quite quickly. This afternoon's topic is electrolyzers, so that will start in really just two minutes' time. So grab a seat. Uh, someone will come around with a drink, and I hope you all enjoy your afternoon here at the Hanover Fair Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries Group Exhibit.